Katie from Solent University and this is the first of a series of very short videos looking at some aspects of construction technology. And the first thing we're going to think about is a little bit about structures. Not in any kind of depth, but we need to understand what we mean by the term structure and that is different from what you'll find in many other definitions and also what that means for how buildings meet the ground because the purpose of a foundation underneath a structure is to make sure that the loads of the structure can be transferred safely to the ground below. Here you can see a very diagrammatic representation of a house. If I zoom round it a bit, see another building behind, we'll get to that in a moment. It's just got four walls and a roof. If we take the roof off, you can see that we've got some walls underneath and we can see on this house basically what the loads are carried on. The loads of the roof, the loads of any floors, are going to be carried on these walls of the house. And it's those walls, those long elements, that are transferring the loads to the ground underneath. And that's the important thing that we need to keep in our minds. Because the walls are carrying the loads, the walls are considered to be structural because any aspect of the building that's carrying any kind of loads that's transferring loads from one place to another is a structural element. If we go to the next building alongside this now you can see what I've done is draw just a little industrial shed. As an industrial shed it's going to be carrying its loads differently. It looks almost exactly the same shape as our house, only a bit bigger, but if I take the roof off this one you can see that the loads of this building are going to be carried on these columns. So we've got a very different situation here. Now with our house the loads are being transferred along the whole of the length of this wall. So we need a foundation that's going to carry the whole of the length of that wall. But if we go to our industrial unit, the loads from the roof and any intermediate floors are simply transferred down these columns, which means that in relation to a foundation, we just need a foundation underneath each of the columns. But because the loads are likely to be quite big, because this is a much bigger building, it needs to be a lot chunkier. To finish this video, we just need to look at what we need to do in the way of foundations. And you can see that what I've done here, I've got my green site, which is supposed to look as though it had grass on it. I've effectively dug a little hole all the way around the line of where those walls are going to go for my new building. And the walls are white because they haven't been built yet. It's just so we know where they are. And then what you do in the bottom of that trench, all the way along the length of the walls, is fill it with concrete. And it's the concrete that transfers the weight of the building, the loads, from the building into the ground, and it's the ground that carries it permanently. So that's our load-bearing wall situation for our load-bearing buildings. For our framed building, where the frame is, is coming down in, in individual points with a big load at individual points, if you imagine this grey part is my floor level, you can see the line of the floor around here. The column's going to be dug into the ground, but the hole in the ground, instead of being a long trench, it's probably going to be rectangular and it's going to be designed to take the loads down the column and into the ground from that point there. So what you have is a deeper foundation that's usually going to be square because it'll want to distribute the loads evenly coming down the column and into the ground under the building. That's all for this one. The next video will be a bit more about strip footings and strip foundations like we get under our load bearing walls and we'll talk about some more complicated ones after that. Thanks for staying with me.